everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ashley and I'm an architect in Ontario. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the changes and updates that are being made to the internship program in Ontario. And a lot of them are gonna be taking into full effect this year, 2022. So I thought that this is an appropriate time to talk about those changes and updates that are being made and how that's gonna affect new interns and old interns as well. So if you're already an intern for a few years now, then you're gonna be falling into the new changes and updates that are being made into the internship. So I'm gonna be talking about those and comparing it with the old system, and we're gonna see and compare those differences and chat about it. So if you're an intern right now or planning to become an intern, then this video will be helpful for you. So if you're interested, let's get started. These changes and updates for the Ontario internship program have taken into effect for new interns since last year, January 1st of 2021. However, if you've been an intern prior to this, then you were given a bit of a grace period. So by June 30, 2022, you will be falling into the new updates and changes. So if you haven't completed your internship yet, by June 30 of this year, you're gonna be falling into the new updates and changes that need to take into place. So that means that you're gonna have more hours to complete. And I will get into that into more details because we're gonna go into the comparison between both the old, the existing internship program and the new internship program. Now, if you are planning to become an intern architect, you're gonna be falling into the new internship program so it doesn't affect you too much and it only affects you I believe in my opinion affects you a bit more if you're already an intern and you're gonna have to then if you don't get your internship hours done by that period of June 30th you're gonna be falling into these new changes which means you're gonna have to be doing more hours so here on the OEA website you can see what the OEA has presented in terms of the upcoming changes of the program. So you'll see here that this took an in effect as of January 1st and the existing program subsets are gonna happen in June 30 of 2022. And so these changes were approved by the CALA, so the Canadian Architectural Licensing Authorities, and the schedule of this of these changes took effect in Ontario January 1st of last year of 2021. And so the changes include quite a few different things. And so it includes that allowing all the recognized students to log up to 760 pre-graduation experience hours toward the internship program, which I think is long overdue. As long as those hours satisfy the requirements of the program, and there are details on the OEA website. So you can get hours in between your studies. It is important that you need to be a student associate. So if you're not a student associate, you can't really log those hours and take it into consideration. But I'm very happy to see that they are providing that option because a lot of times you're, you don't have your full accreditation of your education, meaning that you haven't done your master's degree and you have completed your undergrad and you're working at a practice, you're collecting experience and you can't log that experience. Now you can, but you need to follow the OEA website. There's some details of what you need to do to be eligible for that. And so you would become a student associate and on the website, it'll explain what you need to do to become a student associate. And so, and if you want more information as well, I can also walk you through that process in a future video. So let me know in the comments if that's something you're interested into. Let's jump into the comparison chart, which compares the old internship program with the new internship program and what those changes entail. So here we have on the left side, we have the new internship program that took an effect of last year of January 1st. So if you were a new intern and you started the internship program in January 1st, you would follow under this new internship program. However, if you're already an intern prior to this and you already got in a few hours and you've been collecting them, and if you don't complete them by June 30, unfortunately, you're gonna have to collect the additional 
new hours that the new changes into the new program so you're gonna fall under the new program and so you're gonna have to collect that difference so and that could be a little bit discouraging now I don't think it's too bad the changes let's just dive into it so in terms of the main differences you'll notice that they've highlighted in yellow the key differences so program and programming remains the same you still need a minimum of 80 hours to do that now they have added they haven't really i wouldn't say they've added a new section but they almost renamed it and they added environmental analysis and you'll notice a key theme on this the new internship program has a focus on sustainability which i think is great this is something that we should be focusing more and embracing as architects in the field so you'll be noticing that a bit more in the new internship program what they have done is they've added with site analysis environmental analysis and the total amount of hours remains the same it's still 80. they have up the schematic design which was 120 hours to to 240 hours so you need now 240 hours in schematic design so that's a bit of a difference and in terms of engineering systems it's no longer called engineering systems coordination it's now called engineering systems integration and you now need an additional 20 hours so it used to be you need 120 you now need 140 hours so building cost analysis code research remains the same you do need to now this is a new section that was added is you need envelope detailing I think this is great because I do think that, that this is something that a lot of interns could benefit from. And as architects, we could all benefit from more envelope detailing. And um, so I do think this is good. And again, that ties back to sustainability. And so now you need envelope detailing and you need 80 hours. And so this is new. In terms of the construction documents, you now need less construction documents. You only need 700 and 60 versus 1080. I have to say that I would have embraced this because I personally, the phases that I enjoy the most are the earlier stages. Um, so I do enjoy design development, concept, programming, schematic, and those are also where I tend to spend most of my time. Now, I'm not saying that I don't like construction documents. I do, and I do think it's important as an architect to know all your phases, but do I? Do I have a preference? Yes, I do. So for me, I would be really happy with this and I'm sure there's are, there are many interns that are as well. And then in terms of specifications and material research, that remains the same. You still need 120 hours. In terms of document checking and coordination, you do need more hours. You need 100 versus the 80. And then energy literacy was added and sustainability. I think this is great. And they've added 80 hours for that. Now, so that gives you a minimum hours of 2,200 hours, which in total for category A is the total amount of hours. So they haven't increased the total amount of hours for this category it's still the same in comparison to the old program. The only difference is they've just reshuffled the hours around here and there. So they took some of the construction document hours and they, you know, moved it around into other areas and increased it in other areas as well. In category A, you needed an additional hour. So within category A you needed to be earned from either one to 10 from category A. So meaning that overall you needed also an additional 600 hours in either programming, site analysis, construction documents. So in either one to 10, you need an additional six, which meant that you needed for this category an additional 2,800. So that was something that the new program does not have. So that's something to keep in mind. And now moving into category B, one of the main shuffles that happened is the retitling of bidding and contract negotiation. It's now called procurement and contract award. And you now need 120 hours versus the 80 hours prior. They have also increased the construction phase for office and site from 120 to 200 hours. So overall for category B, you need 520 hours. Now, 
This may seem like it's more, but remember, in the old system, you needed a total of 80, then 120 and 120, which gave you 320 hours. But then there was the caveat that you needed an additional 240 hours from any of 11, 12, and 13. So you needed an additional 240 hours in construction phase site, office, or bidding construction negotiation. So either one of those, you needed an additional 240 hours, which meant that you needed a total of 560 hours, which technically is more than what we now need to complete in the new program, which is the 520. So that's something to keep in mind. Now let's move into category C, management. So there's a few changes here. What used to be called project management has now, be, has now been retitled as to management of the project. The total amount of hours is the same. You still need 120 and it used to be 120. Now what used to be called office management is now called business slash practice management and you need 120 hours versus the 80 hours prior. So in total in the new system, you need 240 hours. So the 120 plus the 120 for a 240 hours. And prior you needed 120 plus 80 so that would give you 200 hours, but then remember, you need an additional 80 hours in either project management or office management for a total of 280 hours. So within categories A, B, and C, you would need 3,640 hours in the old system. Now in the new system, categories A, B, and C, you only need 2,960 hours. And then in the new system, there are some remaining additional hours that you need. So from categories A, B, and C, from one, two, three, four, up to 17, you need an additional of 760 hours versus the old system, you needed 80. What I like in the new system is that in the old system, you had within categories A, B, and C, you needed to have those additional hours within that category. Now in the new system, you actually have the flexibility of gaining those additional hours within any of the categories. So there's a bit more flexibility. So if you are working more on design, and construction documents, you can document those hours. And if you are working more on the management side, you can document those 760 hours under that. But overall, there are some minimums that you need to meet, but then you do have those 760 hours that you can get some flexibility across all categories versus the old system, which didn't really have that kind of flexibility. You needed to get those additional hours per category. I think that's actually a nice update. And so overall, the total amount of hours is the same. You still need the 3,720 hours in both the new system and the old system. It's just a few things got reshuffled. I think that some more flexibility got built in in the new system. And then you have sustainability areas of focus as well, which I think is great. And so if you got value out of this video, make sure to like the video. And of course, if you would like to support the channel, make sure to subscribe and you can do that here. And if you would like more information about how to become an intern architect, you can check out this video here. I hope to see you on the next video. Until then, bye.